I will start with African culture because art is a subset of culture. African culture represents the accumulation of the manners, attitude, beliefs, way of dressing, customs, food, motifs, art, ob art artifacts, and everything that our forebears in Africa had to create or that had to generate in the process of their interaction with each other and their interaction with the environment and also in the process of conquering nature. Everything that has become part of the tradition of the African, which has been passed on from generation to generation, represents what is called culture, African culture. Art itself are those representations of culture, representations of beliefs, representations of mannerism and so on and so forth, motifs that our forebears in Africa have had to come up with, to generate from generation to generation and transmit that have not died. That's why I'm using the word transmit, that have been transmitted from generation to generation to the current time and that will be transmitted into the future. Now, to me, what does it mean? It means the essence of my person as, as a human being. It means my identity as an African. It means everything that I can uniquely claim to represent me and my people and my environment. And that is what African culture means to me. Well, it all started per chance. To start with, I can draw. I did uh, art up to class three in the secondary school. But because I veered into science, I lost that latent skill until I was studying in the University of Ibadan. And I had to go to Yabatek to read in their library, which was close to my grandfather's house. And during my periods of boredom and when I'm tired, I go down there and I see the works of students of Yabatek that produce sculptural works. I started from sculptural collections. And that's how it all started. As a student in the University of Ibadan. It, it, was, it started as an interest, as something that drew me to it. I mean, I just found myself most times, I read a little bit, I go downstairs, I begin to imagine things, I begin to appreciate what I was seeing. So it started as interest, and then it became a passion when I began to act towards his acquisition. And that passion grew from time to time and became an obsession. So I think I am at the stage of glorious obsession in the collection of art. They communicate with me and I communicate with them. On the intellectual uh, platform. For instance, on my right here is a woman grinding pepper. When I was a kid, my grandmother, Mrs. Marie Olubu Michelon, who was, the grand, who was the daughter of the first lawyer in Nigeria, Shakwara Williams, she used to send me, and my grandfather's house was in, is in Sabu, in Yaba there, at Atoyekon Street in Yaba. And she would send me to Sabu Market to go and grind pepper. As a kid, and I will go, I'm playing football. My grandmother will tell me, don't use machino. I don't want my pepper ground by any grinding machine. But as a young boy, you know, interested in playing football, I would spend some one hour or so play football, and then I would take it to the grind, grinding machine to grind. And as soon as I 
took the pepper home. My grandmother would smell it and say, you want me to be shaky, you want me to be and beat the hell out of me. So whenever I see this work, for instance, there is some relationship between me and this work. And again, the transformation that has taken place, technological transformation that has taken place, and the change in the environment that has taken place since those, that time. Nobody now grinds pepper in the market in Nigeria. So when I look back, I remember my childhood. I remember my, my beautiful grandmother, tall, beautiful woman, one of the best woman, women that ever lived on the surface of this earth. And I will remember it, and I will pay glory to her, to her soul, you know. On my right, in my grandfather's house, we had uh, tenants who were making ogi. And they were making gari. They were from Ijebuland. They used to come. Uh, one of them was a washerman, and then the wife used to make ogi. One of the other tenants used to make gari. And... I remember my childhood in Yaba, in Sabo. So, I mean, I can go on and on like that, you know. So when you, when you are in this garden, for instance, you're taking a tour of the cultural, you're taking a tour of the cultural spread of my people. In any part of Nigeria, is it the, is it the goje trumpeter? Or is it the artilogu dancer and trumpeter? Is it the uh, flutist, the woman, uh, the, the Igbo uh, drummer, slit drummer? I mean, I can go on and on and on. So there is a travel. When you come to my garden, you travel through the culture of Nigeria in bronzes, in bronze structures, and also stones and metals. You can't be bored. Is it the fishing techniques, the fishing methods? You, if you look at some of the um, uh, works in uh, metal, you see fishing in, using spear in the uh, Agugu fishing festival, or using um, a basket, or using um, gods, or using uh, there are various things. So look, you need to go around and you get, you get, but if I take you around the garden, it will be a tour of, uh, of, the, of the culture of my people. So when, when, you, when, I, when I'm before art, there's a lot of communication, interaction between me and the art. In terms of my own personal experience, in terms of my exposure in, in the academics, you know, intellectual um, exposure, in terms of philosophy, in terms of religion, in terms of anything. So it, it keeps you busy mentally. It keeps you engaged. So there is more to it than just the physical structure. It's very challenging, I can tell you that. Uh, you observed Adiola Balogun visiting me this morning. One of the, uh, the sculptural pieces here, the rain came and, um, you know, damaged it. And you saw me give him a check for uh, preservation. He has to restore it. I have a farmer there on the bicycle in metal work. A village, uh, the Igbo farmer, with a lot of containers in one single uh, bicycle. The way they normally do it in the, in the Igbo, Igbo villages. It also needs restoration. I mean, I've got, I have people engaged regularly to help me restore the, um, the artwork. When I land here, landed here now, it, I observed that this, this um, um, support for my woman grinding pepper, the bronze, I mean, the, um, the, the marble has chipped off. I've got to, I was mentally thinking about how I'll get in touch with the, with the tiler to come and ensure that it's in, in, in place. So it's, uh, it's an engaging thing, it's very engaging. Uh, you just have to have the passion, and like I said, you have to have the obsession to get to, to, to find that you can justify, you can justify your cost-benefit analysis of what you are doing. But don't look at it in terms of return, because there is no return whatsoever, because I don't sell artwork, I only buy artwork, I don't ever sell artwork. My artworks are for me to, to enjoy and to pass on to future generations, and like you know already, my museum is already uh, being put in place. The first privately funded public museum for Nigeria is already being put in place uh, on the grounds of the Pan-Atlantic University. And many of the works, you know, will go. And many of them will still re remain because there are so, so many. 
you know, I've only picked um, a percentage of what is here to go into the museum. I don't have favorites in terms of artists, and I don't have favorites in terms of any artwork. Each of them, interact, I interact and enjoy them the way a father with plenty of children, you know, enjoys and appreciates his children. I don't have any favorite work. The only thing I can tell you is that I started by being a collector of sculptures. And then in the, my desire and in my zeal to ensure that I collect for others, not for myself, I expanded the scope to include every other thing. But I really don't have favorites. Again, it depends on one's mood, you know. Uh, you just find yourself liking this work for this length of time, and before you know what's happening, you have acquired another one, and you are thinking of removing the one that you used to like. So these are things you cannot, you cannot, um, you cannot prevent. So it's difficult for me to tell you I have any favorite work. If you are a, a real collector, you find yourself gravitating towards auctions um, because you look at the spread of your collection and you want to feel the lacuna in your spread. Um, there is a particular you have one, one style of art you don't have or one generation of art you don't have or one particular artist you don't have. Where you can only get is the secondary market. There are two different kinds of sources of uh, obtaining artwork. Exhibitions represent primary source of collection of art. In other words, you have access to the artist directly. Auctions provide you a secondary source for buying artworks. Now, why do you go to the primary, which is the exhibitions of artists? You go to the primary to discover new talents that you will not have the opportunity of meeting, but for visiting um, exhibitions. You go to exhibitions to discover new styles and concepts that you know, are emanating, that are emerging. You go to exhibitions to do that. But usually don't go to exhibitions to buy works that you set out to plug the missing gap in, your, in the historical context of your collection. For instance, I collect art based on clearly defined um, historical uh, structure uh, of the history of Nigerian art. There was a time I had sculptures and I wanted to start, it, to start collecting paintings. And I said, where did paintings start from? It started from an Ainanobolu. So I started looking for Ainanobolu. And then followed it up by Akin and then found myself taking Ugoji taking uh, Charles Shainumi, taking uh, Mokpai, taking um, Okebulu, taking Simon Okeke, and then blah, 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 like that. So where do you get that? You don't get that because some of these artists are dead, long dead. And you don't get that in an exhibition. So where do you go? You go to an auction, auction market, or you source from the, uh, from the estate of the families of dead artists or dead collectors and so on and so forth. So the auction provides you a means of acquiring artwork in the, sec in the secondary market. Whereas, generally speaking, the um, exhibitions provide you a means of acquiring works in the primary market. You need both as a collector. You need both. If you want to continue to be relevant, in the, um, in the art field, you need both the auction and the uh, exhibitions. I passed that stage. Nigerian art is very, very commendable in terms of its development over the years. But especially when I compare it with other countries that have had the opportunity of interacting with in Africa. We have a lot to thank our um, artists and collectors in Nigeria. Nigeria is one country where the bulk of the collectors are the in indigenous of the country. Um, in some other countries, they have to depend on visitors, tourists, and um, non-indigenous to 
to, for the art industry. But my country is one place where the bulk of the collection and collectors are done by Nigerians themselves. Secondly, there has been a lot of growth in terms of spread of the materials being used. There was a time when, you know, all you knew about painting was just buy paint and, you know, put on canvas. Now you find artists using bottles, cover, bottles, covers. You find artists using bottle covers to produce painting. I have one in the, in the fish pond there, in my gazebo on the fish pond, using bottle waters and using um, cut, cut uh, tires to form, to form a two-dimensional um, art piece, relief structure, and so on. And you find Nigerian artists using butterfly skin, feathers, to produce art, and many others like that. You find Nigerian artists using um, nails, like Olu Amada, for instance, has that, those mighty works there, done in nails. You have Nigerian artists using um, tires that would have been thrown away by vulcanizers uh, to produce major works, like you have the bull over there, and some other ones produced by Adeola Balugun. You have Nigerian artists use, using um, nail cover, roofing nail cover, to produce art, people like uh, Luki Yora. You have Nigerian artists using um, um, knots and bolts, people like um, uh, Prince, um, Prince Okpan, or people like um, uh, Luki Yora and Co. You know? you, you, and then people like Chijoki, and so on and so forth. The material use is so so widespread now, you have to respect the Nigerian artist. Now, in terms of pricing or value, I will rather use the word value, the value of art, it has risen significantly over the years. Works that some of us used to buy in the 80s for peanuts are now going in millions. So um, it's now a residue of, um, it's now a residue of, um, of investment. So it's an investment vehicle. So that's all I can say. And then in terms of experimentation, versatility, in both in output and in um, materials and everything, even now you now find Nigerian artists using the Facebook to promote their work. Uh, people like uh, Olumide or Eshegun. I mean, I remember some three, four years ago, when he came here telling me, oh, wow, 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 I'm, uh, my work is now on Facebook. And he would tell me, you know, this work you are pricing for this, for this amount, people on Facebook have been hailing it. You know, and I say, oh, let them buy it from the Facebook. You know, but it's now grown so well that even his uh, Instagram and so on and the internet and uh, CNN are, are now celebrating him. So my, um, Nigerian artists are great and wonderful. Wonderful um, um, people like uh, this boy, Olumide uh, on I mean, using uh, waste bags, supermarket waste plastic bags, to produce beautiful sculptural pieces, uh, both two dimensional and two di and three dimensional. I mean, there are so many of them like that, you know. So it's it's it's, it's a very welcome welcome development in uh, in the art industry in Nigeria. And uh, I think the sky is the limit. Don't, you don't need to be rich to collect art. I started as a student, University of Ibadan. You don't need to. So don't stop looking at art as, as if it's a, it's a rich man's pastime. It is not. There are, there are different levels of artworks for different people. If you can buy paintings, you can buy photography, you can buy photography, you can buy, you know, small pieces and so on. You know? So my advice is number one, don't look at it as as if it's um, as if it's meant for the rich, because it's not true. Two, visit exhibitions. Even if you can't buy, just go and look. And then it will, grow in, it will grow in you with time. And then you'll be able to be, select what, you, what suits your own temperament and your, 
vision and so on and so on. So visit, visit exhibitions. Uh, number three, be conscious of the fact that the artist is uh, a very productive person who spends time to produce a piece of work. Don't price it like you are pricing um, pepper in the market. It's not a must that you must buy the work. But please give a fair value. Pay a fair value um, for the work. For, I think, to a large extent, you know, try and encourage Nigerian artists in whatever way you can. If you can buy artwork, do something to encourage Nigerian artists. Uh, because in doing that, you are helping to preserve our culture and our heritage. Art is a form of documenting history. If you look what the job of the archaeologist is, the archaeologist uproots artifacts, cultural objects, historical objects to determine the course of history of man. Art is part of it. If you go to the ancient museums like you have in the central Brussels, and you see what people have done in the 13th century, the 14th century, the 15th century in art. It gives you a clue about how humanity developed. If you go down to the, in the Vatican, you know, the Sistine Chapel, and you look up and you see around the frescoes and so on and so forth, it tells you a history. About, and then you go down to Uffizi Gallery in Florence. It tells you a history about the development of art, and it also tells you about the history of the church, the, 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 emperor, the, the, the empires of Spain and France, and the armies of the, of the Vatican competing with each other uh, for supremacy of world affairs, and so on and so forth. So it exposes you, teaches you history, philosophy, religion, name it. So. Um, Get involved. Travel. Travel. And when you travel, don't go shopping. Don't go shopping. Go and discover the world. Discover heritage sites. Discover museums. Uh, discover, you know, things that will educate you. Uh, because that is the most important part of life. And when you buy a big box of useless things that won't last anyway, many, many of us will pack loads of boxes when we travel. At the end of the day, most of what we bring in, we don't even use them. They are not useful. So, but my dear, knowledge. Knowledge can be very, very useful. It lasts, and that's what you take to the grave. Not those stupid material things you buy. Now, let me tell you, every collector has to be conscious of the fact that he has a finite experience to stay on this earth. And that he owes humanity a duty of preserving the culture of his generation for the benefit of future generations. I sat down and I thought about it, that there have been collectors before me. People like Professor Adeo Yelambo was a big collector. I visited him when he was alive. He was a collector. Where are his works? People like Olisambu was a collector. Where are his works? I can go on, people like Jide Maye was a collector. Where are his works? There is a professor in Abuja that died recently that has a, a number of works of Muri Adijimi and, um, and, um, and uh, Mufu Onifade. Where are the works now? You need to create a conservatory. That, will, that you can deposit your works so that generations yet unborn can benefit from the little effort you have contributed to preserving the culture and heritage of your people. And so I thought about it, what do I do? So I got myself involved in negotiation with an institution that shares similar objectives and passion with me and that can assure me of sustainability that can preserve my legacy without toying with it, that can ensure that profit goal of uh, you know, making 
money will not destroy my legacy when I'm gone. And I thought, and I searched around, and I don't want to take my work abroad. At, now at this stage, not yet, but I could still partner with anybody. After establishing the, the Yemisi Shila Museum, I can still partner. So that's how I came about. So I, I, now, I now searched around, and I found an institution that can partner with me to ensure that my legacy lives on after I must have. Because we all have a finite period on that. You may be 10 years old today, you are going to be 90 tomorrow. You may be 80 to, today, you, you're going to be 90 tomorrow, and you're going to go to the grave. And so one has to be futuristic and visionary. So that is how I ended up partnering with the Pan-Atlantic University to um, set up the Yebisi Shila Museum. Well, to start with, I, before I built my family, I had artwork. My wife met me with, with the artwork. So she has been forced to live with it and to appreciate what I am appreciating and to take me and the artwork as a total package. All my children were born crawling between artwork, all of them, the three of them. And I, I am blessed with a wonderful, wonderful three, uh, three wonderful children. They never broke any of my artwork while crawling and growing up. And now they are, they are in, uh, in their adult uh, age. My daughter is, I have a daughter and two boys. My daughter is very much in love with that. Indeed, she uses my money, feeding money abroad to buy copies of Caravaggio, Leonardo da Vinci. And I, one day I just looked at her you know, bill and I said, ah, my daughter, you are using my money to buy copies of artwork. I, gave, I didn't give you to buy artwork, I gave you to feed. You know, but then I, I can understand that the gene has passed on. You know, my sons, my two sons, well, they look at the investment part of it anyway. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, like all boys, they are more interested in the investment part of it. Well, they passively enjoy the work with me. But my daughter is as, uh, as committed and as uh, beaten by the bug as I am I'm beaten. My wife is also very cooperative. I owe her a lot. Uh, monies that I would have used to, she should have used to travel frivolously abroad, uh, used to buy unnecessary things. She has cooperated with me to use them in, in acquiring some of these works for the good of the future uh, generations of Nigerians. And I'm looking forward to um, opening up that museum in the next one or in the next two years, uh, and um, that will be the icing of the cake of my life. Because I would have come to this world for a purpose, and I would have fulfilled that purpose. Because I believe my purpose on earth is not to have children, it's not to build houses, it's not to have money, but to contribute to humanity and to add value to society in a selfless manner without intending to generate, to generate any, anything out of it, but to contribute selflessly for, I mean, to my society and for the benefit of humanity. And that is the one great fulfillment I'm looking forward to.